Hi everyone, my name is Nikos Pakhilvanis and today I'm going to present a tutorial on binning of metagenomic sequencing data using Galaxy. Now to start with, we are going to training.galaxyproject.org where we can find the, uh, the list of all tutorials available on Galaxy. Once we get here, we we'll scroll down and look for microbiome tutorials. We click on microbiome and we scroll down again, looking for metagenomics tutorials. Once we get here, we can find the binning of metagenomic sequencing data tutorial, which we click on and we are redirected to the tutorial we are going to go through. Now, in this tutorial, the first thing that you will see is the overview panel. In this panel, you will find the questions that we are trying to solve. What is metagenomic spinning? What tools are available for metagenomic spinning? And how to uh, assess the quality of the results of this process? By the end of the tutorial, you will be able to describe what spinning is, what are the common problems in metagenomic spinning, what software tools are available for performing this process, and how to evaluate your results. Now, uh, to start with, what exactly is metagenomics? In simple terms, it's the study of genetic material recovered directly from environmental samples like soil, water, or even gut contents. The beauty of metagenomics is that it allows us to analyze the samples without the need to isolate or culture the organisms within them. This approach op opens up a whole new world of microbial diversity that we otherwise might not have access to. Now, let's talk about metagenomics binning. Binning is a critical step in metagenomic analysis, where we, we classify DNA sequences obtained from sequencing into discrete groups, which are also called beans. The main goal here is to assign these sequences to the organisms or the taxonomic groups that they originate from. This helps us to understand better the diversity and functions of the microbial communities in our samples. There are several methods to perform metagenomic spinning. Sequence composition based spinning, these methods. This method uh, leverages the fact that different genomes have distinct sequence composition patterns, such as the GC content or codon usage. And by analyzing these patterns, we can group sequence fragments and assign them to specific genomes or group uh, groups of genomes. There's also the coverage-based binning. Here we use the depth of coverage, essentially how many times a sequence is read during sequencing to group and sequences. The age originating from the same genome typically have similar coverage, making this a powerful tool for pinning. And there is also the hybrid pinning, which is, as the name suggests, a combination of sequence composition based pinning and coverage based pinning. Apart from these three methods, there's also the clustering based pinning. This method, this method groups sequence fragments into clusters based on their similar, similarity. We assign each cluster to a genome uh, or genome cluster using their sequence composition and coverage. And there's also the supervised machine learning based binning. This advanced method uses machine learning algorithms trained on annotated reference genomes to classify metagenomic uh, data into bins. It's highly accurate but requires a large amount of training datasets. Now, uh, moving on, metagenomics binning isn't without uh, its challenges. Some common issues we face include high complexity. The presence of DNA from multiple organisms can make the data highly complex. Fragmented sequences, metagenomic sequencing often results in fragmented sequences, which complicates the assignment of each to the correct beans. Uneven coverage, some organisms are more abundant in a sample, leading to uneven genome coverage. 
incomplete genomes. Sometimes we don't come to the entire genome of uh, of a taxonomic group, making it harder to accurately uh, be in sequences. Horizontal gene transfer. This can introduce foreign gen genetic material into genomes, complicating the binning process. Chimeric sequences. The result from this result this result from sequencing errors or contamination and can mislead binning efforts. Strain variation, significant genetic variation within species can make the sequencing between strains difficult. And many other problems that might occur uh, depending on uh, the approach that uh, somebody will uh, choose. To address these challenges, uh, we have several computational tools. Uh, some of them are MaxSpeed, Metabat, Concord, Metarap, uh, etc. Um, there is also a, a benchmark study uh, that compares different metagenomic softwares, software tools, and has, has some gives some statistics and results on which tool performs better or for different samples or different technologies. You can find it on this link. Uh, in this tutorial, we will focus on Metabat uh, 2, which is a very useful and well-known tool. Metabat combines uh, tetranucleotide frequency, coverage depth, and read linkage information to achieve binning, which is which makes it very uh, high accurate. It's user friendly. It's accessible to researchers for all skill levels uh, without the need of uh, advanced computational knowledge. It is very flexible. Metabot works well with various sequencing technologies. It is scalable. It's capable of handling large data sets. It is uh, also compatible, uh, which um, Metabat outputs uh, in standard formats, making it easy to integrate with uh, other tools in downstream analysis. In the tutorial, we will use uh, data coming from the study Temporal Shotgun Metagenomic, Metagenomic Dissection of the Coffee Fermentation Ecosystem. We'll run metagenomic binning to the tools, particularly Metabat 2, and evaluate the quality of the results. We'll be using the coffee fermentation ecosystem data I just mentioned. And by the end of the session, you should have a solid hands-on understanding of how to perform metagenomics binning and assess the quality of your results. Now, uh, we will start by preparing our analysis. In order to do that, I would recommend going to uh, visit the tutorial on how to use Galaxy, how to prepare an analysis, how to create a history, how to upload data, etc. In any case, there are, there are also some uh, comments here for you to uh, see with some pictures and instructions on how to do this. Uh, to this end, we will go to usegalaxy.eu. Uh, you can also use any other instance of uh, Galaxy that you prefer. You will have to log in. And once you log in, you can press the Create New History button right here to create a new history. By pressing this button, a new history will be uh, appeared on your uh, right panel. You can also rename your history by pressing the edit button right here. I will rename it Metagenomics Pinning Tutorial and press save. The next thing that we have to do is to upload our data. Going back to our tut tutorial, uh, Metabat 2 requires assembled contigs. 
We will use the assembly context from the metagenomics assembly tutorial. I would recommend going uh, visiting the, that tutorial to investigate how we produced these files. In any case, there is a, these are uploaded on Zenodo and we can directly use them. Now, uh, in order to use them, we copy the links. We go back here and upload, press upload. We press paste and fetch data. We paste the links here and press start. Once we do this, we can close this. These are our files and we are waiting for them to start being uploaded. For the moment, as you can see, uh, a message appears that this job is waiting to run. Now uh, the jobs are currently running and we are waiting for our files to be uploaded. Uh, this will require some time, so in the meantime, you can do something else. Now, uh, once our samples are being, uh, have been uploaded, we will see all of our samples having a green color. And you can also press on one of them and expect uh, inspect some of the uh, reads. Another very useful thing that we can do is to organize our samples into a collection list. In order to do that, we press on select items. We select each one of them. And then from the selected uh, drop down, we build a data set list. Here we can also uh, change our na the names of uh, our files. We can include only their name in order to make it more useful for the user and for us, more understandable. And we can also give them a name, Assem assembled context. And we press create collection. This is our uh, context. If we press here, we can see our samples. And if we press a sample, we can see uh, the reads and any kind of information that it has. For example, if we press the data set details, it will give me general details regarding the data set. Uh, the original file name, uh, some of the contents, uh, what else, the file size, I can see the file size. Anything, I can see the link, the source link. I can see uh, I can see the length of its read, I can see flag of its read, identifier, etc. Now uh, uh, going back to the tutorial, uh, I would like to uh, say that everything we did is already included uh, in the comments, in these helpful uh, panels. There are some tips on how to import your data, how to uh, create a pet collection, etc. Now, once we have our uh, samples uploaded, we can see them uh, here, we can expect them just as we mentioned, and we are ready to continue with the binning process. For the binning process, we will use, as we already said, the Metabot2 to, uh, tool. We search this tool in the tool section, we press the tools button right here, and we search here for Metabot2, this one, Metagenome binning. Uh, once we are here, 
we there are three options for input data sets. The one is single data set, multiple data sets, and data set collection. We use the data set collection, and as you can see, it is already uh, chosen the collection we already have created. The two, the Metabot two offers uh, several options, and it has a lot of available parameters that you can choose. Uh, you can have a base coverage depth file. You can set the minimum size of a condig. You can change the uh, the minimum mean coverage, the some output options, etc. For the for the uh, for this tutorial, we will uh, keep the default values and we won't change anything else. We also have the option to be notified when this uh, job completes. So we can set like set it like this, but for this tutorial, we will keep it as uh, no. Once we are ready, we press a run tool. We can see that Metabot has successfully added six jobs. It has added six jobs we have because we have six samples in our collection. For each uh, sample, it will give us the log depth pins, two short pins, unpinned sequences, process log, uh, etc. So for the moment, we have to wait until all these jobs are completed. This is going to take some minutes. In the meantime, we can talk about the replication. The replication is the process of identifying a different set of genomes that are the same in a list of genomes and removing all the, but the best genome for, from each redundant set. A very useful, uh, a common use for uh, using the replication is the one of uh, individual assembly. If metagenomic samples are collected in a series, a common way to assemble them is, is called co-assembly. As you can see from the figure, from a set of uh, samples result in a genome using co-assembly. However, this is challenging. If we have uh, similar strains, if we assemble similar strains together, we can result in um, fragment uh, in fragmented assemblies and lose uh, significant information. Instead of this, an alternative option would be to have to make an individual assembly for each sample and then use the replication to separate each strain of the same genome and have the two strains as output. Uh, Metabot 2 does not offer functionality for performing the replications, how the replication. However, there are several other tools on Galaxy for doing that. One of them is DREP, which is a very well known tool and very easy to use. The typical workflow of uh, how to use DREP is uh, genome comparison, clustering, quality assessment the genome selection, and the final the replication output. In this tutorial, we won't see uh, DREP, but we will stay focused on Metabot 2. Now, going back to uh, Metabot 2, we can see that the binning process has been completed, and it gives us uh, five uh, results, five collection results. The first one is the bin sequences, the low depth beams, two short beans, unbin sequences, and process log. The bin sequences are the ones that uh, we are interested for. For each sample, we have uh, the beans that have been, uh, that Metabat2 has identified uh, in the form of FASTA file. As you can see, the format is FASTA file. For each uh, sample, we can see how many beans have been identified. For example, for the first sample, there are one, two, three, four, five beans. And for each bean, how many sequences are included? For example, for the first bean, there are 2,774 sequences included. In the same way, uh, Metabatu uh, 
makes it possible to identify low depth pins again in the in the format of FASTA file, two short pins, or even sequences that uh, were not assigned to any pin. Now, um, in order to uh, evaluate our results, we will uh, use the CheckCam tool. CheckCam uh, allows us to estimate the genome completeness, how complete is the gene that we have uh, identified by the sequences. Uh, if there is any contamination in the genome or any potential misassembly of uh, some reads, it also allows us to visualize our results and makes taxonomic uh, classification of each bean. If we go back to our tools, we can set check um, by searching it like this. As you can see, uh, it is already selected in collection. That means that our input would be from a collection. Uh, the default uh, would be the unbeam sequences. We will change that to bean sequences because these are the ones that we are interested for. And we will keep the rest of the parameters uh, with their default values. Again, we have the option to get notified via email, but we will keep it as a no. Uh, we press Run tool. And a new job is being added online to start uh, running. This will probably take some time. So in the meantime, you can do something else. Once our quality uh, assessment procedure has been completed, we can see the in inspect the results by checking the collection uh, that we have right here. As we can see, uh, the quality assessment has been run for each sample, and we can ins inspect each sample by pressing uh, the name of the sample, or even better, this little eye right here to have a greater view. The results are a tabul tabular uh, matrix. <clears throat> the first column refers to the bean identifier that has been identified in the uh, respective sample. For example, for the first sample, we have uh, five beans, one, two, three, four, five, as we already mentioned uh, previously. The second column refers to the marker lineage. This column indicates the taxonomic rank of the lineage specific marker. Uh, that uh, has been used that uh, has been used to estimate genome completeness, contamination, and strain heterogeneity. Now, the third, the fourth, and the fifth column refer to the number of reference genes, uh, the reference genomes used to infer the lineage-specific marker set. The fourth column refers to the number of marker genes within the inferred linear-specific marker set. And the fifth column refers to the marker set, the number of co-located marker sets within the inferred linear-specific marker set. The next six columns, uh, from 0 to 5+, plus, refer to the number of times each marker gene uh, has been uh, identified. Finally, the last three columns refer to some uh, summary statistics of the genome, the completeness of the genome, the contamination of the genome, and the strain heterogeneity. We should also um, uh, we, we should, you can also download every results locally on your uh, computer by clicking on any uh, of the collections, for example, the bin sequences, and pressing download. The same can happen for uh, the quality assessment results or even for a specific uh, sample. Uh, now, uh, to summarize, uh, 
In this tutorial, we show a step-by-step -step how to use MetaBat2 on Galaxy in order to perform metagenomic binning. We saw that uh, metagenomic binning is a computational approach uh, for grouping together DNA sequences from a mix of microbial sample into metagenome assembled genomes. Uh, we learned that metagenomic binning workflow involve several steps from uh, pre-processing of raw reads to assembly of uh, the sequencing reads into contigs, then binning uh, uh, the contigs into uh, groups, into clusters, how to uh, assess the quality of these clusters and how to annotate these clusters uh, with functional information and metabolic pathways. We saw how to inspect uh, the quality and completeness of the uh, binned genomes. And we gained uh, insights into how to use metagenomic spinning for uh, <clears throat> inspecting microbial diversity and have a greater view of how microbial communities work.